thought project right now, but what I can do and what I've heard <coughs> is that when you're welding a truss on an axle, you want to weld as much of the truss off of the axle as possible, then put the truss on the axle and do that last bit of welding and that'll kind of keep it from warping. So I think what I'm going to do today <coughs> is I'm going to just kind of clean the mounting surface of this axle off. It's really not that dirty. And then I'm going to mock the truss up again, tack the truss to itself, and uh, weld it probably right here on the floor. And then I'm going to every kind of every couple welds or so, I'm going to put it back on here and make sure that it's nice and straight and that it's not warping. And then I'll take it back off and weld a couple more beads, and hopefully we can get all of the truss welding done without actually welding it to the axle. And then once I get the axle shaved. I'll put the truss back on here for a final time and actually weld the truss to the axle. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by cleaning this up and then I'm going to move on to mocking up and then I'm going to actually start tacking. I'm going to just tape these up. I don't want any spatter balls getting on these bearing surfaces or seal surfaces and causing a ruckus. And the uh, likelihood of that is pretty low but tape is pretty cheap. so. You know. I'm just gonna do it. Then we don't have to worry about it. Now, a quick bit of trivia about me. If anybody ever asks, one of my least favorite things to do of all time is clean up dirty axle housings. But, work hard, play hard, I guess. In case you didn't know, this stuff actually makes a really great cleaner, as well as a uh, um, thread breaker, or I guess a thread penetrator. There's just something about the oils and the nasty stuff that's in there that does a really good job of cutting through grime. Actually, the more I look at this housing, the more blown away I am by just the, where they've added some incredible strength. Like, look at the thickness of this flange where this tube presses in. I think the tube itself is, I don't know, three eighths of an inch to half an inch thick. It's ridiculous. The tube is retarded thick. Then you get to this flange and it's crazy thick. Just crazy. And then you have all of this webbing, top and bottom. This thing is just ridiculous. This is going to make a really great one-ton axle. I want this surface clean because I'm going to mount the cover on here and then there's a spot where the cover integrates with the truss so I want to make sure that it's going to be in the exact same location. And then to get some of that penetrating oil off, I'm just going to Windex it. All right, let's get the cover on. I tighten them all to a couple ugga duggas. Oh, missed one. Cool, so covers on. It's probably one of the coolest covers ever made, if I'm honest.
it would appear that this just increased the gap that I've got here. Which I'm not a humongous fan of, because the gap is going to screw us in the end. I think it would be wise for me to identify what's causing gaps between the truss and the axle tube and eliminate that now. Alright, I've identified this location, you can see marked out in orange, where this uh, protrusion is for the speed sensor. So I need to shave that area out to get this back portion of the truss to sit on the axle tubes. And then you can see these uh, tabbed in self jigging guys here. I think what I need to do here is knock that tab down a little on each side because right now it's holding this front piece up off of the pumpkin which is fine but it's making it float over the axle tubes too so I'm gonna carve this out and then I'm gonna knock those down slightly and that should allow the truss to sit firmly on the axle tubes Hang some shelves? Yes. The pieces are now sitting on the axle tube all around. Very happy with that. Okay, now this middle piece is raised up. And I bet you the truss itself is going to sit right on that. And then we're raised up here too. You can kind of see raised up. So, I think the, the goal here will be to just knock these down with this touch. This touch is right here. Let me see if I can... This little ridge, this is touching on that ridge, so I can easily clear this guy to fit. These guys, they're going to have to get shaved down, but it's really not a lot of shaving. But first, we'll see how the truss even fits on here. The biggest issue is, see if I can get you to see this, the biggest issue is I've got a gap all through here, see if I can get the light to go through there, there you go. i got a gap all the way through and it's caused by sitting on top of this tall spot. So I am going to have to do something about that. Luckily this upper portion sits within the boundary of most of this, so I don't have to shave the whole thing down. Those would be painful. So I've got this marked out, and then this and this marked out. Now I'll start shaving them down. Alright, there's the clearance made in that, so now I'll reassemble. This is back to sitting in its tabs, and this piece and that piece, so it's nice and flat. This flap disc has just a little life left in it. So let's use it first. is completely eliminated. Come see. So before, you could definitely tell a little air gap. Now you can see it's just so so slight that it's, it might as well not even, even exist. I can't even hardly get my fingernail in it. So that's good. And we got the same or even better on the other side. So now we're ready to actually, whoops. Now we're ready to actually start doing some welding, I think. This is the exciting part that I hope I don't screw up. Okay, I've got this mopped up on here for the last time. I've got all my little fixes made and they're all 
Poifect, it is time to start tack welding. I'm just going to tack weld, I think, in a bunch of really key spots. Um, in these tabs, I don't know if you can see up here. In these tabs, I'll tack weld. In these open corners right here, I'm going to tack weld. Probably, actually, I'll probably tack weld here and here. Um, up in here, up in here, up in maybe these corners, that corner, and then maybe like, I don't know, it'd probably be smart to do it on one side, down here and down here, and on the back. So I'm just going to start tack welding, and uh, I'm really pleased with this. This is, uh, this is the highly tuned fitment of my desire. I think the, the goal here is to get good penetration without just freaking sending it to Mars. So I'm going to find a good middle ground. I'll probably weld it on the quarter inch setting because this is, this is all quarter inch, uh, the thinner stuff. So I'll probably stay on the quarter inch setting and go from there. I'm going to go ahead and give a really light coat of this all over the place because I don't want any spatter holes or nothing either. This nice fresh clean metal. Nope, I'm gonna have to go get a can from the wife. I stole both of her cans. This one's pretty much empty, so we'll use it up first. And it's gone. One, two cans. Good thing we've got all of the world's pan. The welding on the dreadnought has begun. These are some heavy duty tack loads coming out of this quarter inch setting. <laughs> Whoops. Alright. So this is tacked. With some pretty meaty <laughs> tack welds. Look at these tack welds I did on top. Holy smokes. So, anyway, we're ready to start partying. Let's get this truss off of here. Oh, none of that now. I think while this piece is bolted in to this front cover, I'm going to weld this open corner seam. And uh, I don't have to put this on much heat, and it's pretty much touching all around, but this part will keep it from warping and help keep everything straight and aligned while it's on top of the axis still. So I'll do that, and I'll let it cool, and then uh, we can go from there. I really want this to turn out utterly epic in every way, so I need to just remind myself constantly to take my time, to not rush and to always get the ideal settings, the ideal situation for all of this work that I'm going to do. That way it just turns out as good as possible. later I can do two across here and uh, we'll have a fully welded across bit. Even though fully welding across the front would look great, it'll warp like crazy I'm certain. So I'm going to do like a little two inch bead here and then we'll move on to a different spot in the dress. That is bead number one. Let's nicely fill in that spot. That is bead number two. And you can see some of the glass has already started to chip off of it right there. It looks like porosity, but it's not, I promise. And then bead number three, right there. So far, welder's running damn fine, and I'm not running half bad either. They're pretty good welds. They're not perfect, but I'll take them. 
I think what I'm going to do now is move on to trying to fill these up a little bit. I'm probably going to fill that gap, then the one on the other side, then take a break, then come back to them later and then fill the whole thing in, and then again, walk away and come back later. Now I'm just going to weld open corner right over my tack where that upright meets the, the deal. That'll be a better idea. Let me go change the welder settings. Good way to make those beautiful with those fat ass tack rolls right in the middle like I did, but they look good regardless. You know what? I'm having a thought now that I should just finish these two welds. Because it is it's not in a spot where it's really gonna warp anyway. And it's cold because it's open corner. So let's just do that. Alright. I'm gonna preheat this corner just a tiny bit. Decision, because otherwise it'll just pile up and look funny. Anything I can do to make this look as good as possible, I'm gonna do. All right. Well, I'm pretty happy with these welds. These are like some of the showcase welds that you're going to see when you look under the rig. And to see this weld right next to all these other beautiful ballistic welds, I think I've just done myself pretty proud. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to let these cool off for a minute while they're still bolted to this. And I'm going to uh, consider what else to weld. Damn, that's action-packed. That sucker welds hot. I can hear the whole truss creaking. Should probably get you some slow motion shots. Here, why don't we just do that now before I forget. All right, this is 720p, uh, so it'll be a little ugly, but it's 240 frames a second. So, let's get in here, see if I can't make you some slow motion magic. It still looks okay. I went a little fast, so now I know. I'll slow down a little bit. That weld looks much better. I slowed down a little bit, it took a little bit more time, and boom, weld city. Much nicer weld, much prettier weld. I think I'm going to flip it upside down and do these two on the front side and then we'll put it back on the axle and give it a, a looky-loo. GoPro, stop recording. I think all of these welds so far I'd be proud to show off to anybody. I'm no expert, but I'm getting it done. pattern was a little narrow and maybe it's e maybe it's even a little cold for this material but we kind of knew that because I didn't really set it for the thickness that I'm welding I don't really want to overcook it so I think that's probably good it's 
seems like right now what things are doing is they're kind of like peeling up maybe and uh, I am increasing my gap size front and back but I'm not too too worried about it I'm trying to plan out my next move here I think I'd like to do this corner this corner just to say that this whole portion is buttoned up and then I'll probably do the downward sloping, the small downward sloping portions of this one and this one, but probably on the inside to kind of maybe force it inward a little bit more again. And uh, I might even do another inside weld a little further up on both of them, just, just to kind of coax it inside, or coax it to kind of squeeze in towards the axle tube a bit more. Just give you a quick look in there. Just a couple of simple beads. I'll move to the other side. Okay, well, those are done. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do these now on both sides. Okay. Turning the wire speed down just a little did help it flatten out, and I was able to kind of keep that bead profile. So I think from now on we'll weld with this setting. And all I did was drop the wire speed by five. All right, that's my best looking front bead on these parts yet. So let's keep that up. Yep, I'll take that. Especially once it started going and started heating up the metal more. Man, that's a damn fine weld. I think I can get away with doing these corners real quick and then throwing it back up to test fit it again. Not bad. Got that 90 in there. Looks good to me. It's nice when you can do those all in one shot because it reduces further any stress concentrations. on the front, the back doesn't look like it. Now all that's really left to do is just stitch weld along here. So I guess we better get to it. Before I start working on the stitch weld, I'm going to do these corners everywhere you see one of these corners, just like I did on the other side for this hoop. And we'll get that knocked out. Then I'll have a basis for where to start with the stitch welds. So they look nice and uniform. I'll do the opposite side to let these sides cool down. And actually before I do that, I'm going to do this middle bit right here.
Now I'm going to switch to the other side and do these corner joints now that I feel like they're probably a little cooler. Just get a nice tack load on the end to tie it in there. If you're going to do these little tacks to tie in those beads, it's best to do it while they're hot because then it'll sink into the metal better and it won't stay high and raised up. Alright, let's do those corners on the other side. I think I'll go ahead and do these two beads on either side. It's cold over here compared to all the way over there, so it should just go fine. That's a beautiful well. I'm going to do this tack first. Because it's still hot when I get to the end otherwise, but it's starting to just really eat away at that middle. Okay, now we really should stick it back on and see if things are okay. We just did a bunch of hot, hot welding. At this point, these have started to come up quite a bit, which isn't surprising. Because every time I weld up in here, it wants to go with the thing. So, not surprised there, but I can tell you right now, ain't no way I'm getting these bolts in here. It's come up quite a bit. The last little bits to do, run a nice stitch here, like a nice two inch stitch, run probably like a one inch and a one inch stitch here. I don't know. I'll think about that. I don't want to run too long of a stitch. Yeah. Probably do a two inch, a two inch, a two inch, a two inch. And I'll alternate sides, of course. It's been really nice to just lay down good welds. I mean, I haven't come from this, you know? This is something that I've had to learn, so to get to the point where I can show these welds off, I took a picture earlier and put it on Instagram and Ballistic Fabrication reposted it pretty much right away, so you gotta love that. Also, thanks Ballistic for reposting. This gun might even start to be starting to overheat a little bit. I've been using it so hot. Let's give it a real good swizzle this time. Okay. This probably isn't smart, but this is what I've got going on. Just to knock a couple of these out in here.
Just another little guy. I am well pleased with how this has come out. It's fully welded now, basically, besides filling in those little gaps, which I just can't help but want to do. But uh, I'm not welding this to the tube until I get this shaved. So, right now, that's basically it. I guess I'll do a quick outro while I'm here. But, uh, I'm Daniel. This is Aired Down, where we build cool rock crawler stuff. This is a rear axle truss for the Dreadnought Durango, the family crawler. And I think I just had my very best day of welding at, of any day, period. So, uh, please subscribe, please like, even ring that little bell so you know when I make stuff. And I'm going to make stuff like this. I've got a whole front axle to do after this. I've got these knuckles to weld up too. So I've got lots of entertaining stuff coming up. Anyway, uh, peace out. Go rock crawling. Bye-bye.